this is a cracking hobby. There is so much that you can get from this. This kind of playing a character for the long amounts of time, the intense moments of role play, the real sort of absorbance that's there. LARP is short for live action role play. Putting on a different persona than yourself and playing that persona for an event, whether it's an hour, four hours, or anything up to 11 days. So LARP grew out of tabletop role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons in the 70s. It's a hobby that started in the UK. Um, and it's largely a way of playing through stories that are a lot more immersive than the kind of ones that you can tell with tabletop role-playing games or with um, like the murder mystery evenings that people might be familiar with and all that kind of thing. Most people do it every day. When they go to work from nine to five, they're role-playing. They're not their room self. The sort of language they might use, the sort of things they might say, the sort of things that they do at the weekends, they don't talk about at work. Mm -hmm. They role-play for eight hours and they come home and relax and become themselves. If you can imagine what it'd be like to be your medieval character to play your warrior or your wizard for 11 days there's no watches there's no no radios no cameras no no ipods no mobile phones nothing like that by the time you got to the fourth or fifth day you don't know what day it is day-to-day -day life you know little things piss you off and everything and um you know but you can't do anything about it because you know in the society today you can't smack someone on the side of the head if you don't like them um it's just not the done thing and it's just really refreshing to come to these events and actually just let essentially your dark side go because you can't do any wrong. The 21st century sucks. Marriages break down, um, people split up, they have to sell their house, their mortgages go up, people get credit card problems. I could go on but basically everybody has an awful lot of problems in real life. You come live role playing you forget about it all. It's just very engaging and it, it just makes a total change to just forget your day-to-day -day life, your rubbish job, whatever debts you've got, and um, smack nine shades of boo through people. Normally I'm quite a nice nice bloke day-to-day. -day. Um, I get a little bit eggy sometimes. Yeah, everybody gets pissed off with things. Um, but uh, yeah, here it's just a case of I can drink, I can be a swine, I can live the, the bad boy Viking lifestyle. And, yeah, I don't have to worry about getting phone calls from work. Welcome to EOS. Hundreds of people have flocked here to Kibblestone Scout Camp in Stoke to take a long weekend away from the stresses of real life and enjoy a game of live-action role-playing, also known as LARP. LARP is a game with no winners or losers. Instead, the aim is to take on the role of a character of your own devising and tell a story with the other players. EOS is a system I designed. Um, I've said many times that um, I think LRP should work in a particular way, that certain things should happen and you know there are certain ways in which I want things to, to be. Um, and EOS is me running events trying to, to achieve that. I mean the background of the game is post-apocalyptic fantasy so you have uh, a world that's suffered from terrible uh, storms and magic that uh, has then left sort of survivors who are trying to carve out a new civilization. Um, that's the basis of the game. The players enter with a very low knowledge of what is going on and gradually explore and understand and you know and sort of get a bit more about it. It doesn't just you know, begin and end with each event. Our characters do stuff in between events. So we, we tell the organizers what we're doing and they then tell us what happens. Um, basically this is the result of it, which is lots of little bits of uh, Piece of paper which tell us the you know, storyline, and um, because everything in, in live role playing needs a lammy, essentially it's like a license to say that yes, it exists. And so I've got lots of different lammies of different things that I've got, you know, from from downtime. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's basically our downtime packs, and why we're so excited because we get to find out what's happened. Before you can play, you need to create a character. You're given a list of playable races to choose from, anything from humans to elves and even orcs. Then, you get a chance to personalise him or her with some skills. Each skill is purchased for a different number of skill points, and these skills dictate what your character can do within the confines of the game. Be that doing more damage with their chosen weapon, being able to craft powerful armour, or simply being able to read. In LARP, you can be whoever and whatever you want to be, and it is up to you to create a costume which represents that in the game. Another one of my hobbies that I kind of half discovered through playing the first EOS was leather making, you know, leather working. And uh, the 
leather parts, the leather armour uh, parts that you saw in my costume, I made myself. Same as the breastplate I made myself. Um, uh, assorted other bits I made myself or kind of cannibalised from other things. Pardon the pun. <laughs> um, and I just really love making the costumes and taking the time to make it all look, you know, excellent. Uh, which hopefully when people see the video they'll agree. Um, otherwise I'm just going to look like some freak that likes dressing up like a weirdo. Um, basically I'm the druid of the Traveller. A bit different to a lot of the druids that I played. He's kind of a, more of a kind of common touch kind of guy. Um, whereas opposed a lot of the other societies look up to druids. He actually sees it as a duty that he's got to look after the community. He's got a bit of a penchant for self-sacrifice. Because I'm playing in a, 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 what's essentially a, um, an uber orc, well, yeah, an uruk high style thing. In the system they're called Oregon. Um, and basically they're really bad boys. Uh, and the minimum fizz rep you have to have is black or green skin. And to be honest, the whole green skin thing doesn't doesn't really appeal to me, and it's easier to look grimy with black. Um, so basically, I'm just applying black to my exposed areas of skin. Um, I use this uh, cheapy snazaru for you know just the you know the big block areas of flesh, and then I wear sort of proper like uh, castor oil based makeup because it doesn't deteriorate the um, the prosthetics uh, on my face. Um, which I shall do that, that bit in a little while. But uh, I'm just going to carry on, hopefully, uh, getting this to a nice black consistency. <laughs> Solvent abuse! I've got green over. Also, I guess one of the key things that differentiate it from, um, from like the tabletop side of the hobby is, is the combat side of things, because that's very physical, very immersive side of it. Most certainly most fantasy setting LRPs will contain some element of it using the um, the latex weapons or the rubber injection moulded weapons that you're quite familiar with. Every character has a certain amount of damage that they can take on each limb. These are known as hit points. Should you run out of hit points on either of your legs or your arms, then you lose the ability to use that limb until it is healed. If you run out of hit points on your head or your torso, then you are stunned and cannot defend yourself or perform any complicated actions until you are healed. Should any location which has no hit points be struck again, then you are in serious trouble. Your character is bleeding to death. If you do not receive aid within five minutes, then your character is dead and is lost forever. I can never kind of total up um, how many hit points you have all over, so you have to sort of more or less sort of count in your head how many times you got hit and how hard roughly you got hit, and then so I'll go, ah, oh, right, about now is when I go down. When you go into the woods and six trolls attack you and you don't know whether you're going to live or die, when you go into the woods and you know there's things out there and you can't see what it is, it's, it's amazing. If someone's going to kill you, that's the best bit. Because if a player wants you dead, then a player has taken the time and effort to uh, arrange for you to die. And that's a compliment. That really is a compliment.